Hello everyone, welcome to another Angra Max. Today we are going to continue our previous lesson, which was about questions. And it is about indirect questions. We use indirect questions to sound more polite. Let's say, for example, when you see someone in the street, you want to ask directions, you don't say, where, where is the bank? Okay, this, this sounds a bit impolite. So we want to sound more polite. That is why, that is the main reason, actually, we use indirect questions. Indirect questions, just like direct questions, are um, divided into two categories, WH questions and yes or no questions. So uh, I will explain WH questions first, and then we'll go to yes or no questions. These are three examples of direct questions and then indirect questions. Look, where's the bank? As you can see, where, apart from this WH word, the rest of it looks like uh, a yes or no question. Is the bank? In here, uh, the bank is uh, our subject. So we say, could you tell me, look, could you tell me this part? You don't have to use it this way. We have a lot of options like, uh, may I ask you, or would you tell me, and others, whatever. Uh, could you tell me where we use the WH word, and then we say, the bank is. So, this is the syntax or the structure of a question. When we write the indirect question, we switch it back to the structure of a statement. That is why we don't say, is the bank anymore. We say, the bank is. Another example. What time is it? Indirect. May I ask you, what time it is? So, we don't say, what time is it anymore. We use, what time it is. We use the statement form, not the question form anymore. And because, what time is your actually is your WH phrase. Another example, D. When are you leaving? So, are you leaving? The structure of a question. Now, would you tell me when, the same WH word, when you are leaving? So, the structure of a statement. Okay, now about yes or no questions. Again, three examples. Uh, the rule is the same. You change the a structure of a question into the structure of a statement. Do you live here? May I ask you if you live here? And another uh, one actually difference between yes and no questions, indirect yes and no questions, and indirect WH questions is this if here in between. Remember, uh, something must be there all the time. For WH questions, you have a WH word. For yes and no questions, you need to replace it with something. So we replace it with if. And the rest is the same. May I ask you if you live here? This is do you live here? So we don't use the auxiliary verb anymore. D, uh, next question, uh, direct. Can you deliver it earlier? And for example, you're talking uh, to somebody over the phone and you want to ask this question in a more polite way. So we say, you say, would you tell me if, again, if is here, you can, not can you. You can deliver it earlier. The last example, has she eaten yet? This is a, a direct question in a present perfect. Could you ask her, as you can see, we, we don't always uh, use indirect questions to sound more polite. Sometimes we are asking somebody a question in an indirect way. So we also use um, indirect questions in this case. And, and besides, you know, I told you, it doesn't mean that asking direct questions is always impolite. But uh, sometimes indirect questions help. Could you ask her if, again is here, she's eaten, this apostrophe S is has, not is, if she's eaten yet or she's eaten. This is has she, this is she has. Okay, the next thing we want to talk about is tag questions. We use tag questions to check for information or express our certainty. Let me explain. Uh, these are six examples and six different uh, tenses. 
of question tags. They worked here, didn't they, in past simple? Look, the auxiliary verb for past simple, if you want to write a tag question, you, you need to know what is the auxiliary verb of uh, that tense. This is past simple, they worked here, so the auxiliary verb is did. And another thing is that if the sentence is positive, the tag question is negative, and vice versa. It means if the question is negative, the uh, tag question should be positive. And another thing is the comma in here, you put before the tag questions. So three things, the auxiliary verb for the tense, two, positive and negative, or vice versa, and this comma in here. So let me explain how, uh, how does it work and why we use tag questions. I could ask this question in two ways. Listen, and everything is about my intonation. They worked here, didn't they? It, I, I didn't use the tone of a question. I used the tone of a statement. Uh, they worked here, didn't they? You know, it is obvious that I'm sure of the information um, I'm giving you. They worked here, didn't they? But sometimes I'm really asking for to, to check my information. We say, I say, they worked here, didn't they? You're really asking a question and expect an answer for that question. So remember, if you use the tone of a question for the that question, you are checking for information. If you use the tone of a statement, you are expressing your certainty. You are, you are saying that you are sure of something. Or sometimes we could say, if you go uh, up, you are checking. And if you go down, you are expressing certainty. Another example. He was running, uh, past continuous. The auxiliary verb is was, and the sentence is positive, so the tag question is negative. It's the same auxiliary verb, and the comma is always here. So, he was running, wasn't he? Or you could say, he was running, wasn't he? It means, I know he was running. I don't expect an answer. But he was running, wasn't he? You're expecting an answer. Past perfect. We told her, hadn't we had? Positive, negative, comma. And again, we told her, hadn't we? It means, of course we had told her. Or, we told her, hadn't we? I'm checking uh, uh, the information. Present simple. You live here, don't you? Do. Present simple, auxiliary verb. Positive, negative, comma. You live here, don't you? You live here, don't you? Present continuous. She's coming. Auxiliary verb is. Positive, negative, comma. She's coming, isn't she? She's coming, isn't she? Uh, and uh, present perfect, uh, we say, I've helped. Have, have, positive, negative, comma. I've helped, haven't I? I've helped, haven't I? Okay, we have some special cases for tag questions when it comes to uh, I am, when you're uh, when you use I and am as your auxiliary verb. I'm your teacher. In this case, we say aren't I. So we cannot say am, am not or am not I. It's not possible. But the opposite uh, doesn't work the same. It says I'm not your teacher. Am I? This is okay. So if, if the sentence is negative, you could use am. But if it is positive, you cannot use uh, am anymore. And in the case of an imperative sentence, we say sit down. Will you? We could use will you or won't you because this is imperative. We could use the positive form or negative form or have a seat, won't you? Or sit down, will you? And the intonation uh, is the same as the previously discussed. Okay, the last thing we'll talk about today is echo questions. We use echo questions again to check the information we are receiving or to express our surprise. Listen, I want uh, you not to confuse echo questions with tag questions. Tag questions are asked by the same person who told the sentence. We say, for example, uh, I'm your teacher, aren't I? I, 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 am, I, I say the first sentence and then uh, I ask the tag question. But when, when you're talking about echo questions, we're talking about two people. So the first one, says something, the other person 
uh, uses the echo question to, exp to check for information or express surprise. Another difference uh, between a tag question and an echo question is that this is, if this is negative, this is negative too, so they shouldn't be opposite each other. If it is positive, this is positive. If this is negative, this is negative. Yeah, this, I've never, I know that the look of it is a positive sentence, but because of never, it is considered a negative sentence. Uh, haven't. For example, we say, I have never been to London. Again, the same rule about using the same auxiliary verb uh, for the tense. I, I have never been to London. Haven't you? And again, this is, if you go up, you are checking for information. If you go down, or for example, if you say it like a statement, it means you're expressing your surprise. Listen, I've never been to London. Haven't you? You're, you're really asking. I've never been to London. Haven't you? Like you're expressing surprise. She's a doctor. Is she? You're really asking. She's a doctor. Is she? Expressing surprise. Now let's do some exercises together. Okay, let's just start with the exercises. Uh, the first one, add a reply or echo question to each sentence. Another name for echo questions is uh, reply questions. A. We've got a test tomorrow. And remember, if um, this sentence is positive, the echo question should be positive too. So, uh, have we? We've got a, des a test tomorrow. Have we? Again, uh, one, par one person says a sentence and another person replies with the echo question. B. I don't understand this sentence. Don't you? Because this is negative, we use the negative question. And again, the meaning of the echo question depends on your intonation. If you go up, if your intonation goes up, it means you are really asking. If it goes down, it means you are just expressing your surprise. For example, B. I don't understand this sentence. If, you're, if you really want to ask, you say, don't you? And if you want to express your surprise, you say, don't you? C. Fiona phoned me last night. We say, did she? D. I don't like ice cream. Don't you? We use the same auxiliary verb. E. Tom is leaving tomorrow. Is he? F. There is a policeman at the door. Is there? Because your, uh, your subject is there in here. Uh, G. Lisa has just had a baby. Has she? Because your auxiliary verb is has here. H. I haven't eaten Chinese food. Haven't you? Because the sentence is negative, our echo question is also negative. I. There isn't any milk in the fridge. Isn't there? Again, because your subject is there. J. I met David in France. Past simple, so did you? The next exercise, add a tag question to each sentence. Again, tag questions are uh, asked by the same person who is saying uh, the preceding sentence before that. Number one, we are nearly there, aren't we? Again, tag, in tag questions, opposite echo questions, if your sentence is positive, your, your tag question is negative and vice versa. And uh, the rules for intonation is the same here. If you go up, you are really asking uh, if you go down, it means uh, you know, you're just uh, checking or, for example, you are certain of uh, your knowledge. Well, for example, too, we say, you haven't got a spare pen, have you? Uh, if you know that person doesn't have a spare pen, you say, you haven't got a, you haven't got a spare pen, have you? But if, you're, if you are really asking, you say, you haven't got a spare pen, have you? Three, you're coming to my party, aren't you, or aren't you? Four, you won't be late, will you, or will you? Five, Harry's 15, isn't he, isn't he? Six, Kate and Pat live in Leeds, don't they, don't they? Seven, you don't feel well, do you? Or do you? Number eight, you like fish, don't you? 
don't you? Number nine. Richard's bought a new bike. Hasn't, she, hasn't he? Hasn't he? Because Richard's, that apostrophe S is has, and this sentence is a present perfect sentence. 10. I shouldn't tell you this, should I? Because your auxiliary verb is a modal verb, should. The last one. Make a new, uh, make a new sentence with a tag question, which has the same meaning as the first sentence. Beginning as shown, make any necessary changes. A. I'm sure that Paul doesn't like football. We say, Paul doesn't like football. Does he? Because you're saying that I'm sure. So your intonation needs to uh, go down. Or at least it doesn't need, it, it shouldn't go, go up. B. I'm checking that you've got a sister. It means I'm really asking. You have a sister, don't you? So this actually, uh, the first one it says I'm sure. B says I'm checking. This is only about your intonation. The look of the sentence, the structure of the sentence is the same for all of them. C. I don't think that you've done your homework. You haven't done your homework, have you? It means I know you, have, you haven't done it. D. I'm surprised that the guests have arrived. The guests have arrived, haven't they? E. I'm checking that your name is John. Your name is John, isn't it? F. I'm surprised that we've met before. We've met before, haven't we? G. You're certain that you didn't leave your wallet on the desk. I didn't leave my wallet on the desk, did I? H. You're surprised that William has got married. William has got married, hasn't he? Or hasn't he, if you're really asking? I. You're checking that this book is by Martin Aimless. This book is by Martin Aimless, isn't it?